Thank you for staying with us so far. We entreat you to follow our social media handles at GTV Ghana. If you missed any of the conversations we've had so far, that is your plug. You can catch up on everything. Bring us along with you as you go about your daily duties this morning. GTV Ghana across social media platforms. We are going from Accra to focus on education and particularly from the north. And the focus is on the University for Development Studies, Ghana's first public university in that part of the country. It was established by the government of Ghana in 1992 with the aim of providing higher education to all persons suitably qualified and capable of benefiting from such education to undertake research and promote the advancement and dissemination of knowledge and its application to the needs and aspirations of the people of Ghana, among others. The university a few days ago inducted its fifth vice chancellor into office and he's joined us at the table today to talk about the past, present and the future of the UDS. Professor Seydou Al-Hassan is our guest this morning, vice of the University for Development. Good morning. Good morning, like in Accra so far? Sure. Great. So you're coming into um, this office at a time when education in the north has been dominating conversations a lot. Uh, 30 years of the university's existence is also a, an opportunity to take stock of what you've achieved so far. Would you say that you've lived up to the mandate imposed on the UDS? Yes. And what is the mandate? The mandate of UDS is to facilitate a close relationship between academia and rural communities. And in doing that, the intention is to see how we can generate knowledge with the poor and use the same knowledge to design solutions to the rural challenges. So I can say that we have lived up to the mandate of the institution. Unlike the other sister universities within the state, University of Ghana, University of Cape Coast and the rest, you run a unique system with this, which is trimester. And it's intriguing to some. For the UDS it works. Explain to us why that decision came to be and why it has worked so far for you. Tell me, I think um, the philosophy of the university is uh, community-based, meaning that we are practically oriented. And in trying to fulfill this um, um, philosophy, it is important to ensure that you practicalize education and then uh, touch every mind, every hand, and every heart. So um, the third trimester um, practical program, actually, um, as we said, it makes UDS very, very unique in the sense that um, students are given the opportunity to stay and live in the rural communities, to work with these communities, to generate knowledge, and then contribute to rural development. And by doing so, they are able to practicalize what they learn from the classroom onto the field. And that also offers them the opportunity to have early exposure, you see, to the challenges facing the numerous communities in this country. And it offers them the opportunity to learn, among other things, group dynamics and then um, interprofessional kind of uh, You bring a medical student and then a business student, a social scientist, together in the same community. So they are able to synergize. They are able to look at the community problems holistically. And that prepares them very well. And I'm not surprised that many employers who have tasted our, our students have alluded to the fact that our students are the best. Because you tailor these courses towards addressing social problems. Tell us about um, some of the things the university has done that has addressed some of these issues directly. We know that the North particularly has its own peculiar set of um, societal issues. Yeah, I think one of the main things is um, ensuring that higher education is brought to the doorsteps of the poor. And that is what we are doing exactly. For example, when you talk about admissions, we do it such a way that there is a kind of regional balance, especially courses that are normally oversubscribed, like medicine, for example. And what we are trying to do is that we are consciously encouraging the need for um, the poor to also have uh, equity 
when it comes to access to education. So ad our admission policy, for example, takes care of regional balance. So for example, a student from the East with an aggregate of 10 might be offered, offered medicine into the university. But a student with an aggregate of six from Greater Accra region, just give you an example, might not get admission to UDS. It is just because when you take performance you know, from the various regions, you realize that the aggregate 10 students from the upper is might be the best. The excellent. So we try to consciously design a situation that there is a kind of regional balance in admitting these poor But students. it's not the case that um, identified brilliant but needy students pay less in terms of um, payment to the university. That's not the case? No. As for the uh, brilliant but needy, there are some other uh, kind of windows for them with uh, scholarships that we grant to them. And then some organizations have agreed to offer that kind of scholarship to motivate that category of um, students. But when it comes to admissions and then uh, um, in terms of even uh, assessments and those things, the university consciously uh, does it in such a way that uh, there is nobody is left behind. So again, for the avoidance of it, it's not that um, identified poor students pay less fees at UDS. No, they pay so the same. On, on the scale, they might end up paying the same as perhaps Accra, but with yeah. special focus yeah. on these scholarship opportunities that yeah. may, they may have access to. Yeah, and even the payment mode. Okay. Yeah, it's also designed to favor the poor. So the, uh, some arrangements can be made uh, so that nobody drops out because of an inability to settle them. And this is specialized to UDS? Yes, it is. Another special thing is among the university space, you are one of the first to introduce the multi-campus has that worked for UDS, do you think? And is that what gives you the edge 30 years on? Um, that is a very good question. The multi-campus nature of UDS uh, really took us for about um, 28 years until when we were dismembered. Uh, we've been in that for that period until government came out with this um, one region, one university policy, mm. and then decided that, okay, UDS was doing so well um, in terms of the campus. So why don't we uh, split them and then uh, even raise each of the campus to a status of an autonomous university, and that was done in 2018. Uh, I must say that that policy is uh, good um, because um, it has now made it such a way that uh, in terms of uh, regional basis, all the three regions from northern Ghana are having their own institution. For why in Navrongo, has that affected uh, the, the running of UDS in, in any way since they were taken away from the core of UDS? I tell you, there are both positives and negatives uh, regarding this um, split. Uh, in terms of the positive aspect, let me quickly say that uh, it has uh, uh, offered every region you know, to have an autonomous university, and I must say that there is some kind of uh, social cultural uh, satisfaction there. Mm -hmm. We we wanted a university, and then we have it, so they are satisfied. Then the other thing is that it has brought about downsizing of the um, old UDS that you uh, knew of, in the sense that um, we now trying to manage and govern a smaller kind of, you know, compared to the larger UDS that uh, you knew. Also, it has uh, reduced um, some kind of uh, problems about staff traveling all the way from work all the time, sometimes twice a week to attend meetings in Tamale, uh, invo usually involving themselves in accidents, and even sometimes I'm robbery. So all these things are no more. Happening. You stay in your region, govern your, your institution, and then UDS is also in Tamil. But the um, disadvantage is that initially when this idea of split came, there was a problem of who owns the programs, where the staff will stay, and then some kind of um, resources and endowment, the UDS, how, how we're going to distribute and share all these things. But uh, the good news is that we've been able to 
navigate through all these things successfully. So there is no problem at all. But you do consider yourself some kind of a mother institution to Wa in Navarongo. Naturally. And so you offer them certain services. So Even the policy that uh, this uh, dismemberment uh, outlined the need for us to be and uh, remain the mentor for the Wa University and the Navarongo University. So we are still mentoring them. Is that that they are not uh, actually taking advantage of that? They but think they can go along yeah. Well, perhaps in an advisory capacity, you could do that to offer the advice that as and when they call upon you to deliver, then you would surely, you would surely, surely. do that. Um, you're coming into office at a time when education in the north has become very topical in the sense that people feel a sense of belonging. We spoke to some of your students recently and they talked about how much pride they have in being schooling from the area and not having to move across the country down south to access tertiary education. What are some of the, the initial issues you, you are encountering as you're coming into office as a fifth vice chancellor? Um, I think it's a good point, and I will need to stress on that, that 30 years ago there was nothing like a higher institution of learning in the North, but until UDS was given birth to. So that has really, really filled an important gap in terms of need for higher education learning. Um, yes, I took over barely two months ago. And then um, um, the issues that are coming in front of me aren't so new in the sense that I served as a pro vice chancellor for four years uh, before this um, uh, position. So I am familiar with some of the, the issues. The only thing now uh, we're thinking about is um, how we can fix them uh, in terms of uh, improving a performance culture and then ensuring that we have a very good um, internal uh, uh, work climate. And I know funding issues are there everywhere. There are also issues of uh, lecture rooms, laboratories, and then uh, our IC2 uh, has a few challenge. And then um, we need to look at even the services that we provide to students is an area that I think that um, uh, needs uh, attention. Um, and um, if you are agenda interested in gender, I also to add that uh, there is an issue of how to equalize gender in terms of uh, faculty ranking, who becomes a senior lecturer, who becomes a professor, associate professor, and so on. Uh, there is a little gap there which uh, I think that we need to work towards. And which ones are demanding your more immediate um, attention? Students' think? welfare. So in my vision, I have decided that student, students will be placed at the center of teaching and learning. You see, all that we are trying to do as a university, if the student is not satisfied, the future of the university is sorrowful. Um, because they are those who are going to come out to market the university, join the alumni association, mobilize resources, and sustain the growth and development of UDS. So my first priority will be that uh, all rules, all roads leading to the university should be seen to be addressing the needs of students. We are looking at some of the, the visuals that you brought to us and we are seeing well-painted buildings standing there. We are not seeing any in dilapidated state. So it's hard for some of us who have never been to UDS to imagine that there could be any... I mean, look at this block that you are seeing. Is that an administration block or, or hostel facilities or some kind of dormitory system? They all look well put together. There, there are no challenges there. Um, well, the challenges, um, they are there. Yes, so I think that uh, I'll find them and then take them bring you and another person who is interested to come to UDS. Right. There are challenges. There are, even those that you are not seeing at the moment are very, very disturbing. Yeah, so um, I don't think you don't want to talk about some of them now. Will open his uh, uh, MP or whatever for you to, you know. But the issue is that there are challenges. I must be very frank with you. But we will be able to uh, look at these challenges and, of course, look at the opportunities. You see, as we talk about the challenges, there are equally opportunities because number one, our mandate is very relevant to the national development. Our, we are strategically located in the north, whereby we can use that 
location advantage to attract uh, even private kind of um, sector investment. We also have a very large pool of alumni now who are ready and capable of mobilizing resources. And across the nation, we have land in Accra, we have land in Tema. Uh, the Yana also donated 500 acres what, of land. What's the plan so for these, are all these things, projects? The opportunities that we can tap into to overcome those uh, challenges. Okay, because I'm glad you mentioned challenges presenting opportunities because there are some who may be watching this program this morning and they are wondering what would be the opportunities at UDS for other businesses which may not be education related, for example. Yeah, uh, I think this reminds me of uh, our um, relationship with the private sector. Um, uh, before then, the, the private sector involvement in the um, UDS uh, affairs uh, was very limited. So now we are thinking that, um, um, well, maybe it's because the um, pressure from the app, you know, is affecting every uh, uh, organization, including universities. Um, so we are thinking of now opening our doors and then discussing with possible investors, who are, uh, private enterprise owners, to see where and how they can come in to provide fundamental services like student hotel, uh, hostels, lecture rooms, and then we can do some kind of uh, arrangement and see how we can overcome those issues. Prof, is there a contact where people can readily go to? I know that Abdul Hi, Mumin, we're watching this program very ardently, head of um, Corporate Affairs of UDS. But people would want to know, how can I support UDS? How can I support the students with a proper focus so that they can achieve, high, they can attain a higher education and the, the country will be better for it? Uh, that is why we are paying particular attention to our uh, website now to put in information that you are talking about to show the way and means by which people can reach the institution and then how they can uh, uh, table their requests and then how we can discuss with them and then to come up with uh, a win-win uh, uh, kind of uh, projects or activities that will help the institution. But for now, uh, we are working on uh, setting up that uh, possible contact desk that you are talking about. Yeah, we are putting together so that um, it will be easy to get to us and then easy for us to also get to you. Yeah. Right. And you spoke about scholarships earlier on. What kind of scholarships are available for people who choose to study at UDS, for example? Recently, the university is witnessing a, um, a high rate of um, um, philanthropies coming in to offer scholarships. For example, this uh, um, our brother... Um, and a banker, a doctor, uh, who is now retired. I mean, uh, I was able to uh, set up what he called a Daniel Alas and a, uh, endowment fund. And in this fund, he's, he's intending to use the uh, monies there to sponsor uh, students who do economics and then uh, other social science related programs. And then there are several other individuals who are also. Um, coming to us to offer that kind of opportunity. But the most important thing that the university itself has done is to establish what is called a, an endowment fund. You know, this fund, the intention is to mobilize as, as much as 100 million over a four-year period, and this money will be used one, to provide the necessary academic uh, facilities and also use part of that to motivate students to learn in terms of scholarship. Prof, so the only thing people bring to the table when we invite them for conversations, um, Kafui brings this uh, for the past few weeks, he's been bringing this, the state of our water bodies of major concern, and this is River Pra. So people bring a lot of things to the table. Prof, this morning decided to shock me by bringing a leaf to the table. So um, th this is what leaf is. I'm, I'm a cry girl. I'm not familiar with leaves. So, Prof, wh which one is this? I didn't know that you have seen it. Yeah. Um, this leaf is just representing the leaf in general. And you know how it is spelled? L-E-A-F. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm presenting this as a summary of my strategies 
to move UDS from one to to the other you have a leaf strategy i have a leaf strategy okay explain so to the us elder is for me to offer quality leadership i must ensure that leadership is transformational is exemplary is practical fairness since with all sincerity so that is the uh, leadership aspect so the elder is leadership then the e is the environment of research. You know, um, universities, uh, one of the core mandates that we do is research. So, fixing of laboratories, ensuring that our research institutions or units are well endowed, our graduate research programs are made, uh, put on the right direction, is what I term an environment of research. So the E there is an environment. Mm. Now we come to academic programs. So that is the A, okay. academic programs. Both undergraduate and postgraduate programs, we need to look at them. Introduce uh, new ones, improve upon the existing ones, secure accreditation for all programs, ensure that we take programs that are society and community needs based. So that is academic program. And the last letter, which is the F, which is very, very important. I already mentioned to you that there is no university or institution in Ghana here that doesn't face financial issues. So funding is on top of my agenda. How we can increase our internally generated funds to be able to, uh, you know, support the little help that we get from government. So the LEAF stands for um, leadership, uh, environment of research, um, academic programs, and funding. I'm completely blown away. In, in a few seconds, tell us what to expect. Perhaps in the next 30 years, what's the, or what's the start of the next 30 years for the UDS going to be like? What should we look forward to? Wow, uh, this is a very big, um, I mean, important uh, vision. And that is exactly why I am trying to say that... Uh, I need to provide a leadership um, that is be effective, a leadership that will bring about collegiality, and leadership that will further develop UDS as a practically oriented institution. You know, to become to be recognized internationally as a center of excellence for academic and community services. So we try to envision that um, uh, those say UDS has a bright future. Now, this bright future, we need to ensure that um, in 30 years' time, we should be able to produce very high caliber of scientists, you know, who can um, think about scientific uh, transformation in this country. You remember this present day, we talk about STEM, science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering, mathematics, and those things. Mm -hmm. So, we're trying to see how we can fix the fundamentals, like setting up laboratories, lecture rooms, you know, um, accommodation, and all the things that are required to be able to do quality research, to be able to do uh, collaborative industrial research, and so on. So in 30 years' time, I can foresee UDS to be um, a home of world-class poor scholarship. Professor Seydou Al Hassan, fifth vice chancellor of the University for Development Studies, sitting with us this morning on the breakfast show, sharing his vision for the UDS, offering quality leadership in an environment of research for academic progress with the requisite funding. His philosophy is what he shared with us this morning. Prof, thank you so much. And we wish you travel mercies back to the city that Maltiti loves, and so we all love. In support Tamale Thank you very much. and our very very sincere love and thanks to Abdul Hai Moomin who is always a friend of GBC and Mutalaisa our correspondent yeah. so as well. Can I just say that uh, um, I'm happy you are happy working with your director general you know yes. he's from UDS well so that is uh, one of the
aspects of the impact that we are making. We are trying to win so his, loan, his love from him to Tamale to Akai. So if you no don't way. handle him very well, we'll take him <laughs> back to you. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Prof. Yeah. Prof. Amin Al Hassan, yeah. DG of the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you for this vision as well. And we'll be back after this break to sit down with an NDC um, General Secretary, hopeful at the national level. And he's a former Deputy Minister of Finance gunning for that position. We're back to meet Fifi Fiavi Kwete after the break.